is all catching hell in 2024. It's up for all of them. It don't matter if you Diddy or whoever you is. TGJ, any of them, the, every, all lies will be exposed. That's all. The neocons are losing control of the narrative as this debacle with the Daily Wire clearly shows. And now Donald Trump is even expressing concern about what's happened over there in Gaza and continues to happen, urging Israel to finish up their Gaza offensive warning that global support for Israel is fading. And so, of course, Donald Trump is being called an anti-Semite. I mean, at this point, the Daily Wire will call you an anti-Semite if you disagree with Ben Shapiro about the best flavor of ice cream. This from ABC News. Trump appears to blame Israel for anti-Semitism, says Israel made a very big mistake and is losing a lot of support. You see, as Candace Owens illustrated, you're not allowed to be sad about the innocent casualties over there in Gaza. Otherwise, well, you know what happens. Here's a video of T.D. Jakes with P. Diddy, a popular rapper whose lifestyle does not at all match the kind of lifestyle that scripture commands Christians to have. And here's Jake specifically mentioning and praising P. Diddy in his church sermon. When a famous celebrity comes to his church, Jake's can't help but highlight the celebrity's presence when what he actually should be doing is preaching the gospel so the celebrity might be convicted of sin and be saved. Speaking of Jake's ignoring the utterly non-biblical worldviews of celebrities and treating them as Christians who are in the same camp as he is, here's what Jake said about Barack Obama. Reverend Franklin Graham has made some comments on several occasions as recently as three weeks ago, uh, really questioning the faith, if you will, of the president. He said the president has told him that he's a Christian. I mean, he basically said that going to church does not make you a Christian. But the president is on record as saying that he walked down that aisle. He gave his life to Christ. So what do you say to folks like Reverend Graham, who frankly are mudding the water, but other people who are questioning the Christianity of this president? I find it insulting. We didn't question the Christianity of President Bush when he said he accepted Christ. And I, I, I'm disappointed in uh, Reverend Franklin Graham in that regard. I wish he had the diplomacy of his father who brought the gospel to people without being nuanced by politics. And because when you do those things, you offend people that you're actually called to save and to serve. And uh, I, I, I would hope that he would see uh, the rationale uh, in, in apologizing for such statements because if uh, the president's faith is suspect, then all all of our faith are suspect because the Bible is quite clear about what it takes to be saved. And the president has been quite open about his accepting Christ and him openly confessing it before men. And if it's good enough for the Bible, it ought to be good enough for the rest of us. I certainly agree with you on that. Is all catching hell in 2024. It's up for all of them. It don't matter if you Diddy or whoever you is. TGJ, any of them, the, every, all lies will be exposed. That's all. Ordinarily. I don't waste time talking about tabloid trash news. From time to time, however, a tabloid story grows legs, such as the case involving Sean Diddy Combs, a.k.a. Puff Daddy, Puffy, and P. Diddy. Take your choice of which name you want to call him. On Monday, federal agents raided Diddy's mansions in Los Angeles and Miami. Various news reports said the searches are part of a sex trafficking investigation. Raids by Homeland Security agents arriving in helicopters and armored trucks are not Diddy's only legal problems. Over the past four months, five lawsuits alleging sexual abuse, sexual violence and sex trafficking have been filed against Diddy inside those lawsuits are a list of famous names. And that's what got my attention. This is where the legs are starting to grow. I'm Rick Wiles. Welcome to True News for Wednesday, March 27, 2024. Let's begin our news analysis and commentary 
with a look at this article published by the New York Post. Diddy's L.A. Miami homes raided by federal agents as part of a sex trafficking probe. Well, as I said, uh, the story here, this is the New York Post. Diddy's homes in Los Angeles and Miami were raided Monday as part of a federal sex trafficking investigation. And uh, it goes on to say uh, the raid was made by Homeland Security investigations in the Homeby Hills area of Los Angeles with federal agents pictured coming out of the home with boxes and bags of evidence, including electronics. A Miami home owned by the record label boss Diddy, real name Sean Combs, was also raided Monday as part of the same operation, federal sources confirmed. New York Post said both the California and Florida raids were led by the Homeland Security Investigations Human Trafficking Task Force based on a search warrant issued by the Southern District of New York, sources told the New York Post. At least four Jane Doe's and one John Doe have been interviewed by New York prosecutors in connection to the sex trafficking allegations and a RICO case, sources told Rolling Stone, while further interviews are expected. Well, where else is this going? Well, some big names are showing up. Uh, Here's the Telegraph in London. Prince Harry dragged into Sean Diddy Combs' sexual assault lawsuit. Last thing that the monarchy needs is another sex scandal. They're still trying to deal with Prince Andrew. So what's going on here with Prince Harry? Well, it seems like his name is being used the way Jeffrey Epstein used the name of of people like Prince Andrew. So this is the Telegraph. The Duke of Sussex has been named in a $30 million U.S. lawsuit alleging that Sean Diddy Combs, the rapper, used his name to give his sex trafficking parties legitimacy. That's the same thing Jeffrey Epstein did. He invited famous people to his parties so that he could entrap other famous people. The Telegraph said Rodney Jones, a record producer, has accused Combs, age 54, of a litany of sexual assault allegations. His 73-page lawsuit against the rapper and several of his associates and record labels were, was filed in, the, in New York last month. The Telegraph said the lawsuit claims that Combs was known for throwing sex trafficking parties. It alleges that those affiliated with such parties or those who sponsored them were given access to celebrities such as international dignitaries like British royal Prince Harry. The Telegraph said the Duke is named just once in the lawsuit. It does not suggest he had knowledge of the allegations or was involved, but instead names him as an example of the type of well-known people to whom the defendants might have access. Well, where is this scandal going now? Take a look at this headline by radio station Hot 97. Bishop T.D. Jakes named in Diddy's producer lawsuit. Now, I'm going to read to you some excerpts from a Dallas Morning News article. The Dallas Morning News reported that T.D. Jakes, pastor of the Potter's House in southern Dallas, has been named in a recent lawsuit against music producer Sean Diddy Combs. The uh, Dallas Morning News said Combs' Los Angeles, Miami homes were raided by federal agents on Monday, part of a sex trafficking investigation. Over the past year, Combs has been the subject of several lawsuits that have accused him of sexual assault and sex trafficking. Now, again, this is the uh, report of the Dallas Morning News. In February 2024, producer Rodney Little Rod Jones filed a federal suit in the Southern District of New York that accused Combs and several of his associates of participating in a sex trafficking venture. The suit states that Jones had irrefutable evidence of Mr. Combs detailing how he planned to leverage his relationship with Bishop T.D. Jakes to soften the impact on his public image of Cassie Ventura's lawsuit. Ventura, Combs' former girlfriend, filed a suit in November 2023 that said Combs had put her through 
a cycle of abuse, violence, and sex trafficking. Three more women later filed sexual assault su- uh, suits, lawsuits against Combs last year. The uh, Dallas Morning News article said, when reached by the Dallas Morning News on Tuesday, a representative for T.D. Jakes initially declined to comment on the lawsuit in which Jakes is named. Jakes is one of many celebrities named in Jones's lawsuit, including Prince Harry. In December 2023, Jakes was accused of participating in sex parties hosted by Combs in unverified reports on social media. Jakes appeared to respond to the reports in a Christmas Eve service at the Potter's house. Quote, this is from T.D. Jakes. The worst that could happen if everything was true. All I've got to do is repent sincerely from my heart. There's enough power in the blood of in the blood to cover all kinds of sin. I don't care what it is. The blood would fix it. End of quote. Jake said. Then he he went on to say, quote, but I ain't got to repent about this. End of quote. When reached for comment about those reports, Jordan Hora, director of communications for the Potter's House and T.D. Jakes Ministries, told the Christian Post, quote, recent claims circulating on pockets of social media about Bishop T.D. Jakes are unequivocally false and baseless, end of quote. Derek Williams, executive vice president of entertainment at T.D. Jakes Enterprises, told the Christian Post in December, again, December 2023, that he attended Combs's birthday party with Jakes. Quote, we both greeted the family. Bishop Jakes recorded a brief celebratory birthday video and left immediately to take our other scheduled meetings. Any accusation to the contrary is wholly unsubstantiated, unverified, and false, end of quote. So, like I said, um, what started out as a tabloid trash story is starting to grow legs. And we'll just watch and not comment. We'll just see where this goes. We'll let the story play out. Let's see what else we have here on the news schedule today. How about Nickelodeon, the TV network for children? The Daily Mail reporting... Nickelodeon was infiltrated by predators. The channel employed five convicted child molesters and two other accused pedophiles to work on the TV sets of kids shows. Imagine that pedophiles, child molesters working at a children's television network. Um, This is what uh, the Daily Mail reported. Nickelodeon employed or worked with five child molesters, as well as two others accused of pedophilia. Court records show. Child safety activists claim the channel was infiltrated. Doesn't that sound like a conspiracy theory? Child safety activists activists claim the channel was infiltrated by predators who saw the power it gave them as a way to get close to their victims. But legal records show that convicted and accused pedophiles Prior involvement with the channel was far more extensive. Nickelodeon says it has since improved its safeguards. Let's move on to another story. Candace Owens parts ways with Ben Shapiro's conservative news outlet, The Daily Wire. This was reported days ago by NBC. We mentioned this story. Um, The reason I'm bringing it back is because the story's gotten stranger. Now, NBC said uh, they they described Ben Shapiro's Daily Wire as a conservative news outlet. I would take objection to that description. It's a Zionist propaganda operation masquerading as a conservative news site. That's all it is. Zionist propaganda. Well, Candace Owens, who I I greatly admire, finally parted ways with blaspheming Ben Shapiro. Why do I call Ben Shapiro blaspheming Ben? Because he blasphemes Jesus Christ. Years ago, he said Jesus Christ deserved to be crucified because he was a rebel, a revolutionary who violated the law, and Rome was totally justified in crucifying. And that was a statement by Ben Shapiro. It's blaspheming Ben So I don't know why Candace Owen ever went to work for him. I don't know why any Christian would work 
for Ben Shapiro, knowing that he's a blasphemer. But Yesterday, Ben Shapiro was confronted about being the king of cancel culture in conservative media for, of course, famously firing Candace Owens because she doesn't want to give U.S. tax dollars to Ben Shapiro's favorite foreign country, Israel. And let's just say he wasn't very happy about it. One of the consequences of this war has been a lot of very high passions on both sides, a lot of angry disagreements. You and your company have been at the centre of a very uh, high profile one at the moment with Candace Owens, who's now left Daily Wire. Um, was she fired or did she leave of her own volition? I'm not going to speak to this topic, Piers. At, at all? At all. You can't give me any uh, insight into why she departed? No hints, no nothing. I'm not going to speak to this. That's very interesting because both Ben Shapiro and Daily Wire CEO Jeremy Boring had a whole lot to say about the Stephen Crowder Daily Wire beef and both issued lengthy video responses trying to clear up some of the rumors and some of the misconceptions about what a lot of people believe actually went down. And it makes me sick to my stomach. I know that my business partner, Jeremy Boring, has made him sick to his stomach as well because we had always considered Stephen a friend. I was Stephen's first lawyer. I helped negotiate his contract with Fox News. It's going all the way back. It's got to be at least over a decade. And, um, and Stephen and I had always been very friendly. I know Jeremy was even friendlier with... Oh, well, for a guy who talks for a living, you sure seem awfully quiet now, Ben. What's going on, bro? Can, can, I, ask, can I ask why? I mean, you can ask. No, no, I'm not... You can ask why you don't want to say anything. Um, again... You can ask. <laughs> look at the smug look. You see, he knows that everybody is talking about the unwritten rule in conservative media now. And like the first rule of Fight Club, you're not supposed to talk about Fight Club. And you're not supposed to acknowledge that there even is an unwritten rule. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean I only, I'm only curious because I know what a, a staunch defender of free speech you are. <laughs> and it would surprise me if it had been someone's opinions that would make you want to part Ooh. company with them. Ooh. However, I mean, su suffice it to say, the only thing I will say is what I've said all along with regard to Candace or with regard to any of our other hosts. I am not in hiring and firing position with The Daily Wire. I'm a co-founder of The Daily Wire. I'm a co-owner of The Daily Wire. I'm not actually in management. Technically, I don't have the power to fire her, so I told Jeremy Boring to fire her, and so you can't blame me for firing her. Yes, that's obvious, but we'd like you to clarify your company's editorial policies because it certainly does seem strange that you would fire someone for not wanting to give U.S. tax dollars to your favorite foreign country. Now, if you express those opinions once in corporate conservative mainstream media, you probably won't get fired. You'll get a bunch of phone calls telling you how the business works, and if you do it again, your career's going to be in jeopardy. But where Candace Owens really crossed the line was expressing sadness for the thousands and thousands of innocent Palestinians women, children, and other civilians who have been killed in Gaza recently. That you're not allowed to do in mainstream conservative media. That would be like somebody on MSNBC questioning the validity of Black Lives Matter. Like, it's not going to happen. If it does happen, they're gone. But the neocons are losing control of the narrative, as this debacle with the Daily Wire clearly shows. And now Donald Trump is even expressing concern about what's happened over there in Gaza and continues to happen, urging Israel to finish up their Gaza offensive, warning that global support for Israel is fading. And so, of course, Donald Trump is being called an anti-Semite. I mean, at this point, the Daily Wire will call you an anti-Semite if you disagree with Ben Shapiro about the best flavor of ice cream. This from ABC News. Trump appears to blame Israel for anti-Semitism, says Israel made a very big mistake and is losing a lot of support. You see, as Candace Owens illustrated, you're not allowed to be sad about the innocent casualties over there in Gaza. Otherwise, well, you know what happens. Um, often when there is dissent expressed in the United States against policies of the Israeli government, um, uh, people here are called anti-Semitic. Uh, what is your response to that as an Israeli Jew? Well, it's a trick. We always use it. Jeremy Boring, the CEO of The Daily Wire and co-founder, Ben Shapiro's best friend, said on a Twitter space the other day that he can't think of a single person who expresses those views who's not an anti-Semite. The Daily Wire is a publication, right? We publish, we curate. 
I pay people to speak. I'm not just a platform where everybody can kind of build their own account and say the things that they want to say. I, I pay people and I'm not going to pay people to say things that go beyond certain lines of what I believe. Why would I do that? When asked about Israel's actions in Gaza, that is apparently so contradictory to your own values. You can't name a single person that is not an anti-Semite who would believe that. So it, it kind of seems no, 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 like- no, 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 that's not fair, Lauren. I can't name a single person who isn't an anti-Semite who does believe that isn't the same as saying uh, that I couldn't. I very arguably there is someone out there. I don't know. I haven't. I'm not like tracking the the views of every single person out there. So he's saying that there's not a single person in conservative media who would express those views, but wouldn't be an anti-Semite. But that doesn't mean that there isn't somebody out there who exists who expresses those views who's not an anti-Semite. There might be one person on planet Earth. I can't. I can't call someone to name right now who I think walks the do you, line. Do you think I'm? Do you think I'm anti-Semitic? I haven't followed exactly what your position on all of this is. So it's a bit of a trick question, obviously. I, I mean, I, I don't think it's a tr trick question. That's Lauren Chen, by the way, who was hosting this Twitter space, who was heavily courted by Conservative Inc. Very beautiful, intelligent girl. As soon as she started making YouTube videos, they all tried to glom onto her and took her under their wing and welcomed her almost into the inner sanctum of Conservative Inc. She did all the shows with all the big names at some of the big events, Turning Point USA events. But then they did come to realize that she doesn't support Ben Shapiro's favorite foreign country. And so she has been blacklisted too. The existence of the state of Israel is the single greatest guarantor of my loyalty to the United States, frankly. There's plenty more to come in this video, so stay tuned. But real quick, subscribe to my channel if you're new here, because obviously you're not going to get information and analysis like this anywhere else. This is how you're supposed to behave when you're a mainstream conservative talk show host or a Republican politician. And no one has done more for Israel than <laughs> you, Lindsey, Senator Lindsey Graham. He is uh, a stalwart champion of our alliance, and we have no better friend. So I want to thank you for everything you've been doing over the years. If you didn't see that this was a video, you would probably think that this was a meme. This was some meme that somebody made up mocking the conservative ink agenda, but it's real. But it's not just conservatives. There's something bigger going on here that I detailed in my new book, which you should order a paperback from Amazon.com. Click the link in the description below. Here's Nancy Pelosi breaking it down. I have said to people when they ask me if this capital crumbled to the ground, the one thing that would remain is our commitment to our aid and I don't even call it aid, our cooperation with Israel. Because that's fundamental to who we, fundamental. It doesn't matter if America is completely bankrupt. The government will still find a way to give money to Ben Shapiro's favorite foreign country. <laughs> what say you, Ben? They say that I want America to fight wars for Israel. Nope. Nope. First of all, Israel can take care of herself. A few moments later. If Israel is forced to the wall, the possibility of nuclear exchange is extremely high. That is why it is very important that the United States provide the material aid to Israel and that they also dissuade Hezbollah from getting in. You've also said that Congress is a, uh, an Israeli-occupied territory. Now, what do you mean by that? I said on the McLaughlin Group in response to a question, Jim. They said, do you think that the Congress of the United States will resist this demand for further aid? I said, threw out a crack I'd heard. I said, no, the Congress of the United States is Israeli-occupied territory. What I meant by that is the most powerful lobby in Washington, which Congress can't stand up to, one of the most powerful, is certainly the pro-Israeli lobby. It has gotten its way in this town year in and year out. And I don't think the automatic votes of the Congress of the United States for three and four billion dollars worth of aid to Israel are necessarily in the national interest of the United States. And that comment, which is to ridicule the subservience of the Congress of the United States is perfectly valid. The first bill that I'm going to bring to this floor in just a little while will be in support of our dear friend Israel, and we're overdue in getting that done. I mean, how many years have I been telling you who Ben Shapiro really is? Eight years to be exact, since 2016, since he quit Breitbart in order to then launch the Daily Wire using the Michelle Fields hoax 
as the publicity stunt. Remember this? Right, in a Kelly File exclusive, former Breitbart reporter Michelle Fields and Ben P Shapiro, the now former Breitbart editor at large. He's also the current editor in chief of DailyWire.com. Great to see you both. So, Michelle, let me start with you. Why, why did you resign? Because Ben Shapiro and I are neocons and Donald Trump's plan to drain the swamp would end our rhino gravy train? Do you remember this hoax when she claimed that Donald Trump's campaign manager at the time, Corey Lewandowski, tried to throw her to the ground and then they released security footage and he just like lightly grabbed her on the arm to just get her attention to tell her that she wasn't allowed to bypass the Secret Service barrier? I mean, how much clearer could it be that Ben Shapiro is a phony conservative who is propped up by corporate interests to be the phony king of conservative media when he literally supports the same-sex marriage? Oh, you don't believe me? Well, you must be new around here because I always have the receipts. Like this tweet he posted back in 2020. Fairly recently, actually. I mean, he was already a huge star back then where somebody accused him of not supporting same-sex marriage. And he snapped back, replying, I've been libertarian on same-sex marriage for years before Obergefell, but you couldn't be bothered to Google. I mean, I don't need to spell this out to you, do I? Libertarian means he doesn't care. Obergefell is the legal case that went to the Supreme Court that mandated that Christians automatically start changing the definition of marriage, which I refuse to do. You want to see another interesting receipt? Something else that you'll only see here on my YouTube channel, because I broke this story years ago, but... In case you missed it, here it is again. This is how much money the Daily Wire has spent boosting Ben Shapiro's Facebook posts over the last seven years. So when you have a public page, like any public figure, and they post anything, it automatically shadow bans that post. It severely limits the distribution. And then there's a little button next to the post that says, oh, boost this post. And then you pay, you know, hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands of dollars for one post to then be distributed to everybody who is following a page. So sort of a way, it's a big moneymaker for Facebook. And so after the 2016 election, Facebook made it their policy to be transparent about who is paying what to boost posts on Facebook. And so if you know where to look, you can see that Daily Wire has spent $8.5 million to boost Ben Shapiro's posts thus making him the most popular, most viral conservative on Facebook because it's artificial. They paid for it. Divide that $8.6 million by six years because it goes back to 2018. That's $1.4 million per year. Divide that by 12 months. That gives you $119,000, almost $120,000 a month. Every month, month after. John 3 verse 16. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John 14 verse 6. Lord Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through Jesus. Jesus is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you. If you like the video, subscribe, Give it a thumb up and share with someone.